Hey everyone out there, we are live again and I look forward to spend the next around one hour with you. Uh, we are going to have a lot of exciting things that's going to happen today. I am sitting here in a car on a parking lot in North Carolina because there's good internet here. I have Jon with me sitting in Switzerland. We have Oliver with us in Canada. And we want to talk about church. Um, not just church, but we want to talk about the future church. We want to talk about what will church look like in the future. And I'll just wait a little to more people are on. We are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Just send me a greeting where you are from. I can see there's people in all over America. There's people in China. People are doing business in China and they're following us from China. I can see right now. Where are you from right now? We have Germany. We have other people from Canada. We have from uh, all over the place. Right now we are around we are around 200 people that is live. And I just want to take a, a minute or two more before we continue talking about church, talking about end times, talking about what Jesus is doing. Today, we also want to reveal uh, something very excited we are going to start with. I have a small clip I want to show you later. It's a clip I just recorded this morning about... Um, Motor homes and tent revival. Now it's said. Next week we will go public with the new big thing that's going to happen here with us in America, and that have to do with motor homes and tent revival. We are going to go public with that, and I have a video I want to show you in uh, later today in this program. I hope you are ready. Uh, hello from uh, Singapore. We have from Singapore, Lufrenia. We have from Canada. Hello, all of you out there. Um, for you who are just joined now, I'll just see we are around a few hundred people on here. And we want to spend the next hour with you where we want to talk about the church in the end times. In that way that if we... Look at the world. The world is changing very, 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 very fast. The world has been changing from, uh, so crazy the last three months. But the church needs to adopt. The church needs to change together with the world. And we want to talk about that and how can we be effective in coming together, meeting in the homes and so on. And then I want to uh, show a clip about our motorhome revival, 10 revival. I can just see we have here from um, Australia, Romania. Hello, all of you out there. Welcome to this live show. We look forward to spending the next hour with you. I hope you have coffee ready. I have a mocha myself. That is a, a mocha that is uh, coffee and chocolate. I like that a lot. And then I'm also on the healthy side. I have some water if the order become too much. I have some books with me. The last reformation here, if you're not read that. And the new one, The Call of Jesus. So I'm sitting here in the car. and um, But we want to move on. There's people from Holland also joining here. God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank you for that, um, Tom. I am not a mother, but thank you every much uh, for all of you out there. Uh, it's beautiful. Okay, we want to continue now and go live here, Ella, talk here. I want to say a little about uh, before, I would, I would like to introduce just uh, Oliver. He's going to come later and join us from Canada, but Jon, he is there. And I just want you to say hi to Jon before I will move on with the introduction. Jon, are you there right now? Yes, I am here in Switzerland, so uh, I am excited for this, so it's going to be good. Hey, nice, so good to see you, Jon. Okay, I just want to do a little introduction, Jon, and then he can move on. If we look at the world today, we all admit that the world has changed. The world has changed a lot the last three months. Um, Last Sunday, I was out driving and, and I saw a little this Sunday also that, that many churches uh, here in America where we are, they are now meeting out on the parking lot. They are not allowed to go into the buildings to have worship. So uh, the church have left the building and now meet on the parking lot. 
But I'm afraid that when all of this is over, they'll just go back to the building again uh, and continue as it was before. If we talk about church, I would just start to read this word, what Jesus was saying in Matthew 16, when he talked about that he will build his church. Jesus was saying this, that I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So the church Jesus will, will build, it's a church where the gates of Hades will not overcome it. It's a church that will be strong. Even in a time of persecution, it will not only overcome, but it will grow and it will multiply. And we see that, and, and it's very interesting if you look at church history. If we look at church, countries where there have been persecution, those countries have the church overcome, but not only overcome, they have survived, they not only survived, they have grown, they have expanded. The church in the world is growing big times under persecution. That is the fact. But the church there that is growing and the churches in the countries with persecution are very different than the churches we see in the West. The church in the West is dying <laughs> because of persecution. In that sense that I heard some years ago that they already talked about there in America that there is the 501c3 and uh, all of that. And there's a lot of tax benefit in America. And we have met many mega churches in America. We have been around seeing some of those big, big, big churches. Those big, big churches, if you look at a big church like that, Many just overcome when they come talk about the economy. They just survive. Why? Because they have the 501c3, they have a tax benefit and they get money for the government. And because of all the money to pay the staff and the buildings and, and all of that, they are just surviving. If there's going to be a change in the laws in America and the tax benefit is going to disappear, those churches would need to close down because they cannot have those big buildings. They cannot run church like this if they don't have the money to do it. The church Jesus are building is a church that will survive in persecution. You cannot change the tax laws and see that Jesus' church will die. No, the church he's building will survive big times and will grow big times, but the church we are building will die. Many of the ways we are doing church is just not suitable for the future. And, and there is a picture I just want to share before Jon, he, he comes in. Um, some 10 years ago, uh, somebody gave me a prophecy that the church is like a big ship that's going down, but God is calling people out now to create li lifeboats all over in the homes. And then if I thought about the big ship, if you look at a big ship like a super tanker, an oil tanker, a big, big oil tanker, tanker, if you look at a big ship, it takes around 20 minutes for a ship like this to come to a full stop. So if a big oil tanker is coming and there's coming a boat outside or somebody in front of them, it would take them 20 minutes to come to a full stop. A oil tanker, if they want to turn around, it takes like around two kilometers, 1.2 miles to turn around for an oil tanker. But try to imagine this. It's, it's a big, it's a beautiful ship. But it takes 20 minutes to stop. It takes two miles to turn around. We need to be flexible. We really need to be flexible. And the more simple something is, the more simple it is, the more small it is, the easier it is to both multiply and it easier it is to be flexible. And another picture I want to share before you come in is, is maybe you heard about it with the elephant and the rabbit. Uh, if you take uh, two elephants, a male and a female elephant, and they love each other, beautiful. And you take two elephants and you put it into a cave, 
And they're there for one year, and they fall in love, and they do what elephants do, and they want to get a baby. If you open the door and come in one year later, there is now three elephants. Yeah, those two got one more. So those two elephants got one more, so now there's three elephants. But if you take two rabbits and put two rabbits in a room, close the door, and they multiply, they get kids the way they can get kids, and all kids survive. Those two rabbits, after one year, there's not three rabbits. There is 200,000 rabbits. Because it go very, very fast. 200,000 rabbits. Because they are just getting kids, 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 kids. If you don't want to kill them, let's say you want to kill it. If you want to kill three elephants, they are big, but you if you have a, a gun, you just need three bullets and you have killed the three rabbits. Uh, three elephants, sorry. Three bullets and you have killed it. But if you want to catch and kill 200,000 rabbits, it's almost impossible. And even when you have found them, you think you have them all, but you don't because they're all over the place. And I think this is a good picture of the church that the early church was like rabbits. <laughs> they were multiplying. They were all over the place. They were hiding in the basement, in, on the ceiling, in the rooms, behind the doors. And, and every time when Paul and Saul at that time want to persecute the church, he, um, he went from house to house to find those people. And, and it was difficult to find them. And, and even when they thought they had them, they had they did not have them because they had multiplied and there was more and more and more and more and more. And that was how the early church was and how the church is in countries where there are persecution. But in America, for example, where I am now, the church is more like the elephants. We, we think bigger and bigger and bigger is better. And we want to have mega churches and big churches. And both, they are difficult to multiply. Like Everyone can do a house fellowship. Everyone can meet two and three people and come together and share Christ. But not everyone can start a big mega church. Come on, the money, the organization... And uh, big churches don't get a lot of uh, other churches, a lot of kids, but house fellowships, small groups, they just multiply like this. And I really believe that the church Jesus wants to build in a time of persecution will be a more simple structure, smaller, in that way that when you come together, it's smaller, but not smaller in that way that is is exploding, it's multiplying, it's all over the place. And uh, this is what we want to talk about. Simple, small, a powerful church that will continue in end time. You, what do you have to say about that? I would say what Torben is saying about this, I completely, completely agree. Because this is actually what we see what happened in the book of Acts. This is how the life was with the early church. It was small in the way they were meeting in homes, but they were spreading all over the world. They were movable, they, will, they were flexible, and this is how we see how the early church was. It started as a body, as a living, organic body that was so movable that it became a movement of God, where it, moved, where it spread all over the world. And there we also see that how it started good, but we also do see how it started to be movable and move all over the world we see at one point that it moved to greece and there it became a philosophy and then we do see that it doesn't stop there but it moved to italy and when it moved to italy it became a institution and then after that then we see it moved to europe it became a culture and when the christianity of the church came to america it became a business and this is where we see what do, what's the end result out of this is we see if you take a body and make it into a business, then it becomes, of course, a prostitution. And this is how we see what we see all over the world when it comes to churches is that we have somehow prostitute the body of Christ. And there we see that it the, this flexibility, this organic, this movable, what is not there anymore as it was at the beginning. And this is why I we talk and mention again and again that we need a reformation. 
And this is true. We need a reformation. Reformation where we come back to how it was at the beginning, how it、mm. was in the book of Acts, the early church. And、yeah. this is where we see a reformation, where we see, or to say that we we mention about how how will it be the end time church? The end time church, I believe, how it was at the beginning, as it was the early church, where it will be exactly how we read in the book of Acts. So we are really really exciting about that. Beautiful.、Uh, we want to hear more about you.、Uh, one of your experience very soon when it comes to church. I want to say welcome to all of you that's out there. There is around three hundred fifty people on Facebook and YouTube. We want to talk a little about church and and how the church look in the end time. I have you with me, and Oliver is going to share something more practical、uh, later from Quebec, Canada. Where he talk about practical, how they come together, and how they in Canada under the coronavirus have also need to find new ways to adjust, to continue coming together and continue to reach out to people, because we need to be flexible. We need to adjust. I also want to talk about the whole new idea with motor homes and tent revivals. We are going to do later. Before Jung would share about a house meeting he experienced when he was in in America, where you can see that Jesus really in this. I want to share. I was in、uh, France around.、Um, it's now two years ago. We had a big, big kickstart in France with around thousand people. It was beautiful. But the police came. We were doing baptism. I think we have like eighty people, hundred people baptized. Is going to get baptized. And suddenly the police came in the door and started to arrest us. And they came, and I went outside and talked with the police, and they took a picture of my driver license and and said we are not allowed to be there and do meetings. And I yes, we are. We are allowed to be here and do meetings. We we have permission to do. We are renting this building. No, you are not allowed. And and I was like, I said to the police, I want to see some papers. Let me see some papers. No, no, we don't have papers. You are not allowed. And, And they are trading us, and then they left, and then they came back. We are going to block the road tomorrow, so you cannot come into the meeting. And it was just weird. And then they left again suddenly. We continue, and then they came back, and suddenly more people came back, and it started to be a、uh, really discussion, and and it started to be high the way we spoke. Like, and I was like. This is going to go bad. This is going to get bad. They are angry, and it was in the middle of the battle. So I run in the back, and I shout, took my megaphone and shouted, "Everyone, baptize right now! The police is outside. They're going to shut us down. Baptize right now in the pools with you." <laughs> and the last people who was, wasn't baptized to just jump in the pool, and and we managed to baptize everyone. It was beautiful. Uh, and then、uh, the police came again and talked with us, and suddenly this disappeared. And like, what happened there? And we actually ended the meeting. A few days later, when I went home, I was sitting in the airport and was going to fly to Denmark in Paris airport. And then、uh, the police came, and suddenly the police came and stopped in front of me and said,、uh, "Who are you? Where are you going?" And I told who I was, and I'm going home. And said, "Okay, come with me." And they took me and the people with us and took our suitcases out of the airport, out of the airplane, took us into a room, visited us, checked us, checked everything, and asked a lot of questions to、uh, like, "Do you have money on us? We didn't have a lot of money on us. Do we have this and this and this?" And we didn't. And it was weird, and they call our name over the loudspeaker and said, "Like, come to the plane, come to the plane." But we were stuck with the police there. And after a long time, they kept the plane back for us. And after a long time, they let us go. And it was just—I、uh, remember still、uh, when they let us go. I, I walked like the last person into the plane, and everyone was looking at me like I was a criminal guy because they saw the police came and took us beside. And and checked us, and it was it was shocked.、Um, and there, the police had a paper. I was told with a picture of my driver license I gave under the meeting. So it was the same who was behind our meeting a few days before, where they want to stop it. This is something we are going to see much more in the future. What do that mean? That means that we need to adjust. We need to think different. We need to be ready for what is going to come. I love the big meetings when we can do it, but I can see now the way it's going. A meeting with thousand people in Paris. I'm not sure this is going to be what we are going to see in the future.
Do that mean that we cannot grow? Of course we can grow. Do that mean that we have to uh, pull back? No, that means we just need to adjust. We need to come back to what we see in the Bible even more. And what was that? That was home to home. They met in the homes and try to take the big kickstart meetings where we see the power of God and take it to the homes where we come in, we preach the gospel, we heal the sick, we cast out demons in a small underground setting <laughs> like we talk about the underground church in China the underground church did not mean that they met under the ground they, they were not meaning in cave under the ground no the underground church the underground just mean that they were not um, somehow visible they were not part of the government church they were uncontrollable. There were like 200,000 rabbits running around all over the place, like I shared in the beginning for you who have just joined. Jon, can you just share about one meeting you have in, in America where you went to the homes and how it was powerful to see the, the big thing come into a small powerful setting. And then later we want to move on with Oliver. Yes, yes. Some few months ago we were in America and uh, while we were in America, uh, something, uh, how to say, something birthed in our hearts, something new, but at the same time, it's not new. It has always been there, what we read in the Bible. And this is one testimony I want to share. And some of you maybe have heard this before, maybe seen the video. But uh, while, while we were in America, we were actually uh, invited to go to a place where to have an open house meeting. And the person who uh, organized all these things together, I just told him, you know, now listen, you just go now, try to put everything together and invite all of your friends. Invite your friends and your family to come together. Those you know that they are, they want something more, that there is something. So this is what he did. And when we all came there, the very first thing we did when we enter into that house, we start with food, where we, we were eating together and i like food what i really like with food that it somehow create a, the natural atmosphere when we come together it was not this like oh i'm coming into a big uh, sacramental meet but it was just uh, so simple and people were talking and so on and different things but then after food we we finished it with everything and then we were finished with everything i started to share the gospel and it was so interesting because the, uh, the house was full packed of people. So somebody had to sit at the living room. Somebody had to be in the kitchen. So it was completely pack, packed full of people. So, but I shared the gospel, the radical gospel about Jesus, that, pe that people need to repent, be baptized in water, receive the Holy Spirit. After sharing the gospel, what do we do? Then we demonstrate the gospel. And this is where we demonstrate where we took where I took a person up and I start to pray for that person. And as soon as I start to pray for that person, this person start to manifesting demons where she was screaming and screaming and then something left her. And when something left her, she just started to speak in tongues. It was just a joy. It was just a freedom. And out of that, it was just so beautiful. Out of that, when people saw, not only hearing the gospel, but see the power of the gospel, people start to pray for each other. In the living room, in the kitchen, people got healed in the living room. You start to hear the living taking place in the kitchen. And it, we just saw the kingdom of God. We just saw Jesus just walking among us and the kingdom of God was among us. And what we saw also out of this, that around seven people got baptized in that open house meeting. One testimony was really, really amazing is that there was a girl when she got baptized. And as soon as she came out of the water, her, her face was like, what happened there? And then her mom asked her what happened. And she said that as soon as she came out of the water, she she experienced something she had never experienced before. And this is where she literally saw Jesus. She really saw Jesus. And the people who heard that, people were touching. Somebody had tears in eyes. It was just a beautiful moment. But what was actually really special is that there was one guy there who also came to this open house fellowship. And he actually told uh, to uh, me or one of our team is that uh, three weeks ago, before this open house meeting, he had a dream. 
And in that dream, he saw a road, a road that led up to a house. And out of the house, there, uh, there was a bright light shining out of the house. And he said, when he opened the door of that house, he saw Jesus in that house. And then after, after three weeks, when this open house fellowship happened, he came to this open house fellowship and where he had never been before. And when he came, he said he recognized the same road and the same house. And it just confirmed everything what was happening because this is what we really experienced that Jesus was really among us. And this is what we actually read in the Bible where he says, where two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There he, Jesus, is in the midst of us. And this is what we really experienced. So in that way, we got taste of something, how it could look like what we read in the Bible, how it could look like more in the future. Beautiful, beautiful, Jon. I would say if if I, that guy who got that vision, he came and he saw Jesus in that house. How many places, sorry to, can I provoke a little, how many places would Jesus not come to a church, and a, guy, and, and a guy come to a church, but he don't see Jesus in that church? Like we know from Revelation that Jesus is standing on the door and, dog, uh, the door and knocking and want to go into the church to have fellowship or into that place. You can't have a church without Jesus there. You go to have a house fellowship without Jesus there. But the real church should be believers who come together where Jesus is there by his Holy Spirit. He is present and he's there. If we look at the future, what is going to happen in the future? We know that persecution is going to happen. We know, we see it. Like I told before how I experienced it in, in, in France, almost got arrested. We see it around different places in America, especially in this coronavirus time. But this is just a taste of what is going to come in the future. In the future, we will be hated by every man for the name of Jesus, because the name of Jesus Christ. The, if, the, 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 Love will grow cold. People will be enemies of good, of righteousness, of everything they have to do with God. So we, we will see more of this in the future. And there we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to come back to the real church. One of the things that have been working in us here in America is, I'll share a little, I got a prophecy over a year ago about motorhomes, about going out with motorhomes, about uh, different things. And God started to speak about motorhome and 10 revivals. And to be honest, first time I heard it, I was just like, oh, no, I don't think this is me. Like, I, it was far away from me. But the last month, things have happened. And now we're actually ready to go public with it. And I have a video. I just recorded a video just like two hours ago with my friend Miguel in front of some of our motor homes. And I actually just want to show you this video here. I hope it's ready. And then you can just see a video and I just want to talk a little about that before we move on and hear from Oliver. Hey, good morning everyone there on Facebook, YouTube. We just want to do a little commercial of something new that's going to happen. This is the new thing. We are going to hit the road. We are going to take motor homes out all over America with a revival tent and have revival meetings. We are going to start in the end of July and we are going to tell more about it. We have a motor home there ready. We have a motor home there ready. We have a motor home there that's getting ready. And this is your motor home right there. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait. Uh, just one more month. We're trying to prepare everything and get everything ready. God spoke to you a long time ago about yeah. this. What did God say? God said that... Um, He's gonna get us on the road. He told me that um, he's raising up an army that's gonna be bigger. And he, he said the army is ready. They're ready to go. Um, he said um, that he has put Torben to lead this movement. At that time, Torben wasn't like really it. in agreement, <laughs> but now things have changed and I feel like now is the time. The time has come. We have actually got the many prophetic words. We're going to go out public next week with it. I think you got a word, how long time ago is that? Uh, 2019. 19, yes. I think the same time, another woman, uh, and a woman gave me a prophetic word that we should hit the road with motorhomes, going from place to place to preach the gospel. 
And I was like, no, I don't think so. It didn't make sense also because I was in Europe at that time and motorhomes. And then I came and I met Miguel and Miguel also told me about how God spoke to him. And I was like, I was not sure. More prophesied, more gave words. And now I'm sure. <laughs> now we are ready for it. So... Um, this is your new road I, and a new like, motorhome. Are you ready for it? Yeah, we're ready. Oh. And it's, yeah, it's amazing. Um, God has been putting everything together. We thought we were going to be leaving earlier, but God has been setting us back, setting us back because he has a bigger plan. And the bigger plan was not just me and a couple other people. It was a movement. So I think he's, he's setting up something bigger than we We have yes. many, many people now who's getting ready. We talked with a guy next week we haven't communicated with before. He just told us suddenly out of the blue, God has been speaking to me. I'm selling my house. I bought a motorhome. Time is short. We need to go out on the road. We meet, need to be mowed by out yeah. there. So we need. We are getting a big revival tent. We are gathering 30, 50, 100 motorhomes, 200, 500 motorhomes. And then we are hitting the road. And we will do a video about it next week where we will tell more about it. This is the one of the end time churches that is very, very mobile. Yes. Out there, from place to place, preaching gospel. When we experience persecution, we move to the next place as Jesus is saying. Yes. See you there. See you there. Bye bye. Yeah, that was that was a little about the new thing with the motorhomes, and and as I said, next week we will go public with it and and share more, and and it's really something the Holy Spirit is doing in us. It's not like, uh, hey, let's just do this. Hey, this is a good idea, but it's really something God had been speaking again and again and again, and it's, it's somehow to be honest with mixed feeling. I'm I'm excited. I'm joyful. I look forward to this new step, but at the same time, I'm like, this is going to be very different and very new for us. But we need to adjust. We need to be ready. We need to wake up. The time is short and there is a day where we should work and there's going to come a night where no one can work. And now it's day. It's time to sh to work <laughs> effect effective and get the gospel out there. And, and we really believe this is something God wants to do and we are excited about it. So two big things that's working in our life right now. One of the big things is the whole motorhome 10 revival, calling people back to God. The second thing is some of the things we talk about with the church, with the, um, seeing the church being built of strong disciples. And that had to do also the two books. If you haven't read it, the last, the last revelation here and the call of Jesus, the new one. And you can get it for free if you write to lastrevelation.com uh, or you can get it on Amazon. Jon, we'll just end up with you. Jon, very short. Uh, I know you are together with Joel in Switzerland and know many good things are happening in Switzerland when it comes to the house fellowships and growing. Can you just share something about that? Yes, it is amazing to see and hear how people are growing and continuing bearing fruit. Like one of the things what, uh, what I hear from our friend Joel, Joel, like how they have been done kickstart uh, seminars where they have done pioneer training school but to see also that it doesn't stop there that they continue and continue and now they have several house fellowship and they go out on streets they are leading people to christ and this is what i also see in in, in another area in switzerland where i did uh, uh, the two several kickstart and out of that to see that uh, those who were at the kickstart it didn't stop there some of them went to a PTS Pioneer Training School. And then after that, then they went back home. And to see that several house fellowship has literally multiplying where they now start leading other people to Christ, where they, they now start with discipling other people, where it still, still keep on going, still keep on going, where we actually hearing and seeing the life. So we are looking forward to see more and more and more of this in the future. Beautiful, beautiful. And thank you, Jon, for being with us. We want to, we also have Oliver with us from Quebec, Canada. I just want to say there is 350 people on now. And we have people from Australia. We have people from all over Europe, America. We have from Singapore. We have from uh, many different places. And, and we, for you who have just joined, we have talked a little about the church 
that we as the body of Christ need to be more flexible. Not like two big elephants who get one more elephant next year, but like two rabbits that multiply and are difficult to catch if you want to catch them because it's all over the place. And in the, it's in the small unit of two and three and a little bigger than that. And we are seeing it all over the place. Um, if you see a big, big elephant, or let's say if you see a big, big church, you come and you look at it and you say, wow, look at that big church building. Whoa, look at all of those people. Whoa, look at, look at the economy. Whoa, look at the venue here. Whoa, look at the activities. Whoa. And, and there is a whoa over it. But just because there is a whoa don't mean that this is the, the biggest growing church we are seeing. The biggest growing church we are seeing is not visible for the eyes often. It's, it's, it's invisible. It's, it's uh, all over the place in the homes and in small groups because there is a growth where we are talking about many hundred percent. It can start with two people and suddenly there is 20 people and that is a growth of many hundred percent then we, we see that we often don't see that in the big churches. Like a church that is, let's say a big church that is about 5,000 this year. What is the change that there are t- uh, 10,000 next year and then 15,000 and 20,000? There are not of 5,000, 10,000, 20, 40, 80,000. We don't see that kind of growth, but we see that kind of growth in the small groups. And we want to talk a little about practical. How do that look also when, when, when people come together? And we heard a little from Switzerland with Jon, and now we have Oliver with us from Canada. And Oliver, I want to say hi to you and give it over to you. And want Oliver to just start to give a little introduction of who he is for you who don't know who he is. Are you there, Oliver? Yes, I am. Do you nice. hear me? Yeah, it's so good to see you. Hey. Hey. All right, so my name is Oliver. I live with my family in Quebec, Canada. And um, um, I got born again 12 years ago. And I would say um, four, four years ago, there was a big um, shift in, in our walk with the, with the Lord, where there was a longing after, after receiving a healing, there was a longing in us for discovering uh, more of this life in the spirit. And uh, this started a new journey of seeking the, the face of God, uh, praying, uh, wanting to know more about healing. And this led us to uh, discover the heart of God for evangelism and to reach out to the lost. And this is how we got connected with the last formation. And so three years ago, uh, when these things started to happen in our lives, we, we went to a pioneer training school, went to Denmark as a family. Uh, we started to just put in practice in our life. Those things we were learning, going out in the streets, uh, praying for people every time we have opportunities, sharing the gospel. And we saw uh, this fruit coming alive. What, what we once watched in this movie, uh, what we once read in the Bible, in the book of Acts, started to happen uh, in everyday's life around us. And it led us to uh, learning how to, how, to, how to live that out now and how to handle and shepherd, how to uh, live practically, like in the Book of Acts, with this kind of fellowship in in the homes, uh, going back to the the basics and the foundation uh, from the church. And uh, um, during that time, the last three years in Quebec, it it took uh, it took the shape of different experiences, but home fellowships, uh, small groups gathering in public places, it, it was part of it, uh, learning to work with the people who came to Christ and who wants to, to be discipled with this. And we had the privilege and uh, the opportunity to work alongside many amazing brothers and sisters in Quebec and in Canada uh, who, has, who share the same heart in the last years. And so together we could uh, experience kickstarts also, whether big kickstarts and small kickstarts um, we could experience together pioneer training schools also look 10 school and it's been very useful to connect people with one another and, and create this uh this this network across the country of diverse people in age in 
art. And the, the fruit of it today is uh, lots of learning for each one of us, one step at a time. But in, nice. in many cities, we see home fellowships, we see churches being equipped and starting to, to share this vision we are with, uh, we, with the people that are composing the church. And, and it's beautiful what happens. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I want to say also for you, I, I actually have a guy with me here beside me in the car. I don't know. Can you show your face? He is. He's there. Hello. Hello. This is Peter. He's just with me and helping a little with the computer beside me. Peter, he actually, him and his whole family actually got changed in the big kickstart we had in Quebec with you, Oliver, in Moncton. I think it was. No, Quebec. Uh, yeah, in, the, in, New Brunswick. Mountain, in New Brunswick, we, but he got key, he got changed in a kickstart, but it did not stop there. It led to something else, and now he's with us here. He had been on one school. Now him and his family are helping us with the new vision with the motor homes, and it's so beautiful to see what had been happening in Canada. How there have been kickstarts different places, then there have been schools. Uh, and all of that have led to new things and now is growing with the house fellowships. I know for you who is out there, we would like to be a little more practical. We like to come in also even more practical. How do that look like, Oliver? Can you tell a little about like, how have you adjusted? Uh, how do you do church now in these Corona times? And how do you keep reaching out? And how do it look for those people who are following us here? Thank you, Torben. Yes, so uh, d during the corona, uh, one thing we have heard a lot is uh, the rising up of talks about the end times. And uh, many people were wondering, is this a sign of, of the return of Jesus? Is this a sign of the, of the end times? And it, it was actually very interesting to first uh, try to adapt to the crisis and, and discover uh, what Jesus said for a time as this, uh, a time... Uh, where there's going to be many crises. And uh, I, I think one thing we see at the moment is many churches, we have lockdowns everywhere, uh, like in the US, like in every country, uh, churches are locked up for many of them. And uh, for many, uh, many churches, the, the online streaming, main expression of what is church, the online worship service has become the main expression of what is church at the, at the moment. And it was somehow just the, the response to the su sudden crisis that came up. But uh, alongside with that, we, we've seen a, raise, a rising up also of many people who started to long for uh, fellowship with one another. And, and we've seen the, the rising up of uh, small groups, people connecting with one another uh, organically into small groups through Messenger, through phone. And somehow uh, to value again, not only the fact of sitting down beside one another, but with the, the longing of knowing each other and, and experiencing real fellowship. And this was a fruit, I believe, of isolation. Um, the isolation have closed down many churches and uh, it, it led us back to expressing the church, not only with, you know, attending a streaming event for having some content, listening to some content, but for real, real connection with re real people at the same time. Uh, I believe it was a risk in the lockdown, um, not, not having fellowship with one another. It's a risk for the church for isolating ourselves from uh, this fellowship and isolating from God also. So, so uh, yeah. This is yeah, sorry to interrupt here. I just want to say to hi to everyone who's out there. There's still people coming. We will later have Q&A, so if you have some questions to us about the whole thing with church and so on, you can start to ask those questions now. Start to ask the questions now, and then we will uh, come back to some of the questions later. But we want to talk about church. We want to talk about in, in a time like this. And Oliver, sorry to interrupt. I, I give it back to you. Can you just share a little practical again? There was the online and people was longing for fellowship. What, what did you start to do up there then? 
Well, I believe there is a need for an equipping of people. If we look at the end times, the church, how will it will look like in the end times. Uh, I just want to, to put up a verse that Jesus gave, because uh, at the beginning of the crying about what shall we do uh, in, in times as this. And I believe in Matthew 24, Jesus gave um, an outline of uh, how it will look like on, in the time that are preceding his return. And he said, he spoke about a big crisis, a global crisis of persecution among the church. In Matthew 24, verse 9, he said, uh, you will be delivered up to tribulation. People will hate you for my name's sake. So he's talking to his disciples at this, at this time. And because of his name, people, his people will be persecuted. And then many will be offended and betray one another. Many fall. Mm -hmm. And because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. And I believe we were stuck at the fact that he said, when the day of his return comes, the love of many will grow cold in the church. People will betray one another. People will hate one another. They will be offended because of the love of many that will grow cold. So I was stuck at this and, and we wondered, how can we start to equip one another right now to not fall in this box, to not think this time will come, to not lack of love for one another and betray one another. And so I, I believe it, it comes with simple practices uh, like breaking the bread, like you, you were sharing, Jan, breaking the bread with one another, being in contact with one another, not only attend some meetings, uh, mm -hmm. sitting down beside one another, but actually facing one another. And you cannot build that up in times of crisis. You have to mm. start being equipped in, with this mindset before the crisis comes. And so the journey for the, in the last years for us has been to start leaving this out, uh, gathering with people in homes, getting to know one another so that crisis has come. We just made a shift into online things with Zoom, for example. Uh, in, in very small groups, not only focusing on teaching, yet we believe there is room and we need sound teaching in the church, but having these small groups, these small setups, it helps people to keep on leading this deep fellowship, this intimacy with one another uh, online through the, these small groups, to keep, keep on breaking the bread uh, every, any, any day during the week, just gathering, uh, praying for water and so on this is one of the first thing we have seen and mm. it comes with to prepare for the end time to cultivate the love in the fellowship for one another nice i i, I want to hear a little more practical how it is when we talk about uh, one another the, when we talk about love one another it's actually 16 times in the Bible, 16 times you read love one another. Then we talk about being devoted to one another. We talk about honor one another. We talk about living in harmony with one another. We talk about building one another up. So so it's really one another. And, and when we talk about the love, you, you we say communing. We talk about communing as a loved, love meal, feast. a love feast. Love feast. Um, I've tried different kind of communion here in America since I came here. For you who are not, not in, in America, we have been around many mega churches and, and they are really creative in America. They are really creative when it comes to communion. Um, one, one place you have two cups. So one cup, small cup is being sent around with a drink and then a cup under it with some small bread. But in America, you can find a small, small one all in one where you open the lid and then there's a bread and you eat the bread. And then you open the next lid and then you drink. And it's something that's been sent out. And I was in, in a big church with like, I don't know, uh, four or five thousand people. And community, it happened. I think it took three minutes. Three minutes from the start of it, that we, four or five thousand people, three minutes from the start of it to it was finished. It was like, it was so organized. It was so plain. And the cup was so like, send it and it was gone again. And I was like, 
if you look at the love feast, the one another, we were sitting in a group with many, many people, but there was not one another in that at all. There was no fellowship. There was no sharing life together. There was no, like Jesus said, talking about the true love is lay down the life for each other. Like Jesus laid down his life for us and we should be willing to lay down the life from, from our brothers. And, and I would say that thing, like yesterday we had a pizza night and our ark here and we had pizza and we actually saw a movie yesterday. We came together as a big family. We, we don't have a school right now. We are thirsty people uh, seeing a, lo a war room. Uh, prayer war room yeah i saw it now it was powerful it was about a woman who was praying and the power in praying and and there is just something with eating together there's something with cooking together there's something with being together and i think this this is so so important this is the real church so uh, oliver a little more tell us more about how, how it looked today like the one another how it looked to serve each other, how we look to go out together, how we look to be together and train each other. Yeah, actually, I believe it's one thing to do these things. Uh, we talk about communion and everyone is doing that in church, but it's, it's one thing to do this as a program and it's another thing to do that as a lifestyle or a mindset, this, this one another thing in everyday life. And I have an analogy for that. You were talking about the rabbit and the, the elephant. Another one is uh, the starfish versus the octopus. And we have been trained to know the church as being like an octopus where everything is centralized uh, if, from the head. Everything is program driven. And in an octopus, if you cut an arm, it will grow again. If you remove a member, it will grow again and be replaced by another member. But the head will remain and will still drive the program. But the analogy with the starfish is the fact that if you cut the arm of, of a star, it will grow again uh, in, in the first starfish, but it, the one that has been cut will grow again in another starfish. And it shows the fact that a starfish can reproduce by itself. And, and it's pretty much the same that we, we need to, to, to see as a paradigm shift in the body, where everyone is trained and is able to sustain this lifestyle, not by being program driven, driven, but because it's part of their DNA, of our DNA. And so what it has looked like is just, you know, spontaneous meetings. There are still organized meetings that happen in the church, even in the house. I see some spontaneous meetings where people will just come up together, break bread, uh, pray for one another, and, uh, and, and commit into keeping a healthy practice in their sp spirituality, not depending on a program, not depending on an event, but living it out in everyday life. One, one other practice that we have seen during the crisis, and I believe it's tied up with what Jesus said for the end times also, is saying that many false prophets will rise up in, at the end times. So there will be a lack of discernment. And... Paul is, is echoing second books in Thessalonians and, uh, and second Timothy also, that many will have itching ears at the end times. They will give themselves to the teacher they want. They, they will depart from the truth and be deceived because of a lack of truth. And so if we don't want to fall in that box at the end times, we need to love the truth. Loving the truth first is to be grounded in the Bible, in sound doctrine. And so one practice we've seen in the churches lately is people committing to devote themselves in fellowship, the apostles, with forming small group of two or three people. And we've seen that all across the, the network lately, spreading small groups of two or three people. We call them life transformation groups. And people just commit to read the Bible together each week for a certain numbers of chapters and have God speaking to them directly, whether through the Bible and through the, the Holy Spirit also. And they commit to accountability with one, with one another. If, if they have some sins, they confess to one another, they pray for one another, discuss the Bible, and receive directly from, from the Lord. And 
we, we've seen the need of that at the beginning of the crisis because people were isolated in homes and many started to go a lot on social media, for example, and give themselves to YouTube videos and conspiracy yeah. theories and, and so on. And you hear so many voices and the risk when, when we do that is the risk to be deceived, to listen only to man-made um, teaching and to, to people with um, different theories. And it's the ground that Jesus is talking about and Paul for deception, lack of a love for truth. And we depart, we depart to other things. And so we need to be grounded in the Bible and in sound doctrine. To be the church of the end times, to not be deceived, we need to be grounded in the Bible and to be able to hear from God by ourselves. So one of the practices we've seen in the network is these groups where people read the Bible together and they make sure they get accountable to one another. And prayer also. Prayer of not only intercession for themselves or for the Lord, but listening prayer also. Developing the ability mm. to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They will not be dependent on a video to hear from God, but first being able to to have some privileged time in the secret place with him. Because when crisis will break out, and let's imagine we don't have internet anymore, we don't have Zoom meetings anymore, uh, we need to have this ability to connect with him in the secret mm. place. And we don't develop that. We don't learn that in times of crisis. Everyone knows that when you have a lot of emotion, it's a little bit harder to discern maybe the voice. We need to mm. be trained into that before crisis come. We need to make a practice of it where everyone is a hear from God to devote themselves to the Bible, to have sound doctrine for themselves, and so on. It's another of the practices we've seen. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I would say when, when we when we left Denmark one and a half year ago, I felt so strong. God spoke to us and said, Tom, the church are not ready for what is going to come. You need to prepare to help the church to prepare for what is going to come. And I think this is what we want to do much more also for you who have just joined here. We, we uh, there's, there's many resources out there, but also we, with the last reformation, we want to give out a lot of more teaching about what can we do? How can you do it? How can you connect with us? Because there is something like Oliver say, uh, there's the power in three. Jesus said, when two and three are together, I'm in the midst of you. And Jesus revealed the most inner part of himself to the tree. It was John, James, and Peter on the mount where he revealed himself. And But Jesus also had the 12, and there was also bigger groups, like he, he fed the 5,000 still and, and, and yeah. did amazing things there. But when he draw back to really reveal who he was, he was the 12 or the tree. And I think there is a place to come to get a bigger group as long as we can do that. But we need the 12, we need the three, we need those small groups where we come really together, become one. And as Oliver was saying, learning to hear the voice of God. We here with Last with Mace want to give out resources to you out there. And we want to help even more by starting to build some networks because some of you out there are maybe already doing it but it, it, it feels like it feels like hard work. It feels like just coming together and there's no guidelines, there's no resources, there's no way of really like, how, how do we move on? How do this become good? And as Oliver say, we are here to learn. In the Luke 10 school we had just had here, one of the best things with the last school we had is that in the school we did five church, small fellowship churches. We have groups of 10, 12 people who came together and what we did was they came together first and in the beginning for some of it, it worked really good. Some of it was a little mess, but then we gave teaching and resources and helped them to overcome it, helped them to adjust. And in the end, all five screws became very, very, very good. And it became powerful and it became family. And that is the thing we want to come. We want to come with some resources to you out there so you can already now, even if you are in a tradition church, even if you are meeting there, and I encourage you to take the teaching we have, take the word of Jesus and start to meet two and three. Start to already now gather in a group 
and start to reach out to a neighbor out from that group, start to reach into each other, start to reach out to God, and then start to create that, that New Testament church and let it grow, work with it, and then we will start to come out with resources and help how you can grow and continue. If you have some question about it, let, let just come with it. We will end up soon here, but come with some question now. Oliver, I just want to give it over to you, and can you end up with, for those out there who are already trying to meet two and three and four or five, but feel a little stuck in it, and don't know how to move on. Can you give them some good advice what you will encourage them to do, things you have seen have worked for you? For the small groups like that, uh, I, I would say the, the fuel of it, um, what I've seen making a difference is, is to really experience the life outside of it. To have a focus not only of you know, doing things because we want to do them, we want to, to do it a new program, but living the life in the spirit at the same time, uh, being focused on the harvest, uh, seeking God, uh, f trying to find person of peace, trying to reach out to people out there. It stir up a life at the same time, and it ignites the desire uh, of you know se seeking God, um, reading the Bible, uh, seeing it coming alive. In our life, we see the Lord speaking to us uh, somehow more um, at the same time. So I would just to, to go into a season like that, a season of renewal, where you try to reach out to new people. And about uh, this, this pattern we see in, in Acts chapter 2, in a simple way. And uh, just try to experience it without without the background of all the traditions we, we had before. Reading the Bible, talking about it with two or, or three persons, uh, and, and just going over the weeks with that is just a beautiful experience where we see God speaking a lot uh, to, to each one of us. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, we have some questions. We just end up with questions. And Oliver, I would actually like to give one to you, or it's actually almost to your wife, uh, Julian, but she's not there. One of you asked questions. How how can how do you look with being a housewife in all of this? And I know when Oliver and his wife was at the Jesus Center here in North Carolina uh, last school, not this school, but the school before. His wife was actually sharing some amazing teaching about being a wife and and, and doing it. And uh, somebody would like to hear about that, Oliver. Can, can you just share a little, just take a few minutes and share what your wife was sharing and, and, and just to encourage wife out there to, it's okay to be a wife and be a mother and be part of what God is doing. Yeah. It's to, it's to say that none of this could have happened if she was not there. So everything that a wife can bring uh, in a lifestyle as this is, is valuable, uh, even if it means that you are not doing the same things. And for me, um, it, for, for example, the focus was to, to go a lot in the streets at the beginning and reach out to new people. But it could not have happened if my wife was not, wasn't at home with the children. We couldn't have gone all the time. Uh, where we did it with the children sometimes it couldn't be all the time like that and uh, also to be a house a housewife in a context like that uh, has, has a lot to do with hospitality and with loving one another uh, we are two different person uh, she's a outgoing she's a welcoming uh, hospitable uh, wife and so welcoming people in our home spending time with them uh, having you know sharing meals with one another as the church and so on. It's things, she, she, my wife is, is very more skilled than I am. And, and I believe pretty much none of these things could have happened in a family like that. Yeah. Beautiful. I know, I know, I know when, the, when the, your wife was sharing, she also said something in the beginning. It was like, you are out and doing things and then she feels she had to do it, but then you take care of the kids. But then she found a place where she felt like, hey, this is my kids, is my ministry. This is part of my calling. And then together with the kids, 
he reaches out to other housewives and other people and start to not compare yourself with each other. And, and that was really beautiful teaching. And and what I was saying, especially in this, that in the small church, unity, loving one another, there is room for the kids. Not just putting them to a room for the self. There is room for the wife and husband and, and big kids. There is room for everyone. Uh, thank you, Oliver, uh, for sharing. Uh, we want to start to round up here. I want to say um, for you out there who are thinking like, hey, I want I want to be part of this. How, how can we do it? We are launching something new soon. Uh, we call it Tila Family and, and, and having a lot of resources together with more teaching and re resources, videos you can see. But I encourage you just start start to be the church. Start to come together with people, meet in your home, start together. We have already two good resources. We have the last reformation book where I talk about my journey out of the church system into what we are seeing now. And then uh, the call of Jesus, finding the personal peace, where I talk about the mission of Christ and, and how to go out and, and find people and make disciples. Some of you have asked some questions also about the thing I shared before with the uh, motor homes. I know many people are excited about that. What we want to do, we are going to la uh, launch a video next week about it. I can say already now, the next school that's coming up will be June and July. We will have a two-month school. And in that two-month school, it's full now, but we will open up for people who want to join with their own motorhome. So if you have a vision to be part of the motorhome team, there is a room for some of you to join the school in June and July with your own motorhome. In June and July, we will build it together, we will get the tent, we will do ready, we'll do a kind of summer camp in July at the Ark, North Carolina. And then end of July, the idea is we will hit up with the tent revival and the first place will be Chicago. We will go to Chicago with a lot of motorhomes, new, 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 and a big tent. And then we will do tent revivals. And the whole idea behind this is to stay a place for longer time. We are not talking about a three days kickstart now. We're talking about a two weeks period, maybe. We think about where we will start with revival meetings the first five, six days. Then we will have a kickstart weekend. And then after kickstart weekend, we will have an extra few days about how to set up New Testament House Fellowship. So that will be part of it. And then after that, some of us would leave, not everyone, because then we want to be able to train people on the road. And then when we move on to the next place, to the next state, then some of those people would stay behind and help follow up and help lay a foundation and help continue building what God is doing. So that is the vision behind the motorhome thing. And so interesting because God had just been speaking to so many different people and um, and it's just, we are excited. We, it's also like scary, but time is short, friends. Time is short. We need to build. We need to be ready. We need to prepare the church for what is going to come. Before I end up, I'll just give it over. Jon is still uh, hanging on and we have Oliver. I would just give it over to them and they can give a final word to all of you out there. Just share, Oliver uh, and Jon, what you have on your heart for people out there who are following. What is the next step? What should they do? What do you encourage them to do? Or if you have a word for them, Oliver, can you say something for the people who are here with that? Yes, maybe yes, one last maybe thing to to get prepared also for the, the church the church of the end times is to get prepared by strikes uh, to to practice good works and share the gospel jesus said in matthew 24 as well that in this context we were talking about the gospel of the kingdom will be preached among all nations and then the end will come so it yeah. means that at the end before his return the church will rise up also a part of it yeah. at least and, and share the gospel uh all across the earth, even in places where it has not been announced before. And so it means that to, to be able to be part of that, we need to prepare before it happens. And it's like what he said with the sheep among um, the, the sheep and the goats also, uh, that at the moment he will be there, make his people accountable for the way they have responded. 
in times of crisis, uh, be, before difficult situations? How mm. did his people treated uh, the people uh, going through hardships? And so I believe one of the way uh, to prepare herself also to face this end time as the church is to train ourselves to practice good works and to share the mm. gospel before it happens. Mm. Uh, so that we can continue in times of crisis as long as we can and, and also train others to spread out and continue with that, even in hardships. Beautiful. I want to say for you out there, thank you, Oliver, for being here. If you want to get hold of Oliver, you can go on tlrmap.com and you can find him at Green uh, on the map in uh, Quebec, in uh, around there in uh, Canada. And they have a network all over, uh, all over uh, Canada where a lot of things are happening. So you can find them there. Beautiful things are happening in Canada. I want to say, as Oliver was saying, that this gospel, yeah, it worked a lot in me. This gospel is going to preach to the end of the world and then he will come. This gospel, not, not this gospel, but this gospel. We have grown up under this gospel. We have grown up on the simple, easy, hard easy into a hard gospel. Uh, one safe, always safe, just believe and everything is okay. This is the gospel that has been preached. But I believe we are staying in a time where this gospel, this gospel is going to be preached. And, and when we talk about going out in America with a tent revival, It's going to be a different revival meetings. America is known for revival meetings, but how many revival meetings have there been? Ten revival in America where they have actually preached a full gospel where people have got baptized right away and where people have received the Holy Spirit, where everyone has been allowed to pray for each other and be trained to make disciples. We haven't seen that. So I'm very excited. It's not this gospel. It's this gospel that is coming out now to the end of the age and to the end of the world. And this is the time we are living in. So thank you, Oliver. And for you out there, and, and next time, I actually want to talk about uh, next uh, weekend we are together again. And there we want to talk about, more about the uh, house, no, the motor homes and the revival and ten revival and share much more. And there you can ask a lot of questions about it. Jon, what will you say to people out there before we finish up? Yes, just very simple is that to keep everything simple. That I will say when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to the Great Commission, what Jesus has called us to do, and especially in this season, because now season, because now we are in a season that. After all this, what whatever happened with the quarantine and lockdown, after that, things will change. We will come into a new season. But just because we, we will come in, into a new season, Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. And if he is the same, then the, what we read in the Bible is also the same. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday and forever. And that's why just because seasons have changed, things are changing, uh, what's happening here on earth, the gospel is the same. And that's why... Let's keep it simple. Let's keep the focus. Let us continue to seeking him, reaching out to people, and so on. So that is my encouragement for every one of you out there. Thank you, Jon and Oliver. We love you guys. Uh, you're amazing. And it's so beautiful to be able to do this. Uh, Skype, uh, call you to Facebook where we just come together and share more. And we want to do that next week. We want to continue that and we want to have guests coming in all the time to also for you out there who are following to really show what God is doing. Because yes, we don't have a big church building. Yes, it's not the big elephant as I talked about in the beginning, but it is the 200,000 rabbits that is multiplying <laughs> that's all over the place. And it's time to see what God is doing. It's, it's easy in the beginning to, to notice the elephant, but, but it's, the elephant is not the future. The rabbits is the future. All of this is the future. And if you You have just joined and don't know what is talking 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 about elephant and rabbits then go back and see the video from the beginning and i want you to share this video share it and get it out there and, and let's let's build together let's do it together let's build the body of christ let's see the kingdom grow and learn to preach the gospel understand the gospel but also learn to come together and love each other learn to be a family learn to meet two and three and 
over that and come together and share life and confession of sins. Like, like the whole thing is confessing sins. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so powerful. And we have seen that and we are coming out with more videos about the whole confess your sins because there is freedom. Thank you all for following here, guys. Hope you are doing good out there. Oh, Lord, a place. I can see there's a lot of people on now. And uh, we just want to end up here. And hope that you will share uh, the video and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel as it is. And, um, and then follow. Next week, I will come out with a video about the motorhomes. And then we will continue next weekend where we will do one more live like this. So a uh, big blessing. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Jon, for joining. And Robert was sitting behind and helping with the technical things in Holland. So it's been beautiful. So a big blessing. Goodbye to all of you out there. Love Jesus. Make disciples. Keep it simple. See you next time. Bye-bye.